What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is actually part of our new fan favorite segment, Hey! That's not cool. And the story we're talking about is a back and forth between two people on a public bus, which means you know there's 50% chance of world star hip hop. There's a video of the whole thing, and you know what? Let's let's just watch it. There's not a lot of touch of no one. Fuck. All that other shit you was talking on that bus? I don't care, nigga. You see, right? Yo, you don't go to your mouth, you cuz. Say one more time. In my Say face. one more time. You only call me your Say nigga. Say one more time. You're missing your stuff, Say nigga. One more Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Bro, open the door. Goodbye, nigga. Say one more time. Say one more time. Say one more time. I dare you. Huh? Huh? Keep saying that shit. Fuck this bitch. Call the police. Oh. He smacked the tooth on my head. He put the tooth on my head. He smacked me so hard. You should have had called him a nigga, yo. What's up with you? You gotta call the police now. So, hitting people, violence is never an appropriate response to words, but... I don't feel bad that it happened. Hitting that woman was wrong, it was illegal, it was technically assault. But if I was that bus driver and that lady was like, call 911, call the police, I'd be like, okay, oh no, I forgot how phones work, oh no! I just opened up Clash Royale, I'll, I'll get to it right after, one second. It's just really hard for me to feel bad about a racist, let alone someone that level of racist. Now from this, of course, there has been a debate about freedom of speech. The First Amendment, many arguing that this woman, while despicable, had the right to say these things. The First Amendment doesn't just protect things that you like, but also hate speech. And that's something important for people, including HuffPost editors, who have to include notes like correction. An earlier version of this story indicated that the First Amendment never protects hate speech. It does, because it does, but not always. If the words are considered a true threat or fighting words, and it's a very specific, narrow definition. Abusive language. I don't care, nigga. Exchange face to face, which would likely provoke a violent reaction. So potentially the woman in this video is not protected by the First Amendment, but that also doesn't excuse the attack on her, at least in the eyes of the law. So she could potentially be guilty of disturbing the peace, but it also might be hard to argue because in the video she seems to be saying we all call ourselves that. And so a question I want to pass off to you is, what, what, what's your takeaway from this story? Are they both in the wrong, just him? Also, let's say you're the judge and jury here, what do you do? But from there, I want to share some stuff I love today, and today in Awesome, brought to you by the DeFranco 2024 shirt. A shirt that says, if the United States is still a thing in seven years, and the vampire robot Nazis who are also zombies have not taken over, Philip DeFranco has my vote. It's what Dwayne The Rock Johnson would have wanted, God rest his soul, only yet mysteriously died at my house after he had secured the nomination. We'll never know what happened, we should probably let it go, and just vote DeFranco. That's like a dark turn so fast. We're doing another run of that shirt this week for a few days, so if you want to grab that while you can, link to that down below. And the first bit of awesome, and this will only be awesome to a select group of people, but if you've ever wanted to work on the Philip DeFranco show for the company that we are creating, we have now opened up applications. Now keep in mind, this is just the beginning. It's local positions, so we have fulfillment coordinator, PAs, researchers. You want to apply? Link to that down below. Also, a little while after this, I want to open up remote researcher positions, and then soon after, we'll be looking for more producer, editors, and shooters. But for the first step, it's just those three positions. So there's that. Good luck to those of you that apply. I am excited for our family to grow. Then in other awesome, I did a video with my buddies over at Rooster Teeth. Played a little game of million dollars, but you'll either love the video or, or at least you'll be able to walk away from the video with new information that I also learned on the set, and that is my old piercings from when I was 20 still work. Think things out before you make decisions, kids. Then, if you're in the mood for something that's heartwarming and hilarious, I have to share this video of comedian Russell Howard talking about a 14-year-old cancer patient that, uh, ah, I don't want to ruin it. It's just, uh, just trust me, it's fantastic. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just share the secret link of the day, anything at all. Links, as always, are in the description down below. And then let's talk about this situation in California around Nolan Bruder. Nolan is a 20-year-old man who pled guilty to drugging and raping his 16-year-old sister. Now, if that pissed you off, oh, just wait. The judge on the case, William H. Follett, gave Bruder three years. Just three years, and then he suspended all but 240 days of that sentence, and then he gave Bruder probation. And this slap on the wrist sentence went against what the probation department and the district attorney recommended. And it appears part of the reason the judge gave this slap on the wrist is that the victim, which by the way, I'll just remind you, is an underage sister. So this underage victim, she took her own clothes off and she wasn't unconscious. And the judge believed the stigma of the rape conviction, along with being listed on the sex offender's register, 
Webster was enough of a deterrent to deter the man and others in the community. And personally, I'm disgusted by this decision and also the reasoning. First up, I don't know if 240 days in prison is enough time to teach someone don't rape your sister and or preferably anyone. And two, to the judge's note that the girl took off her own clothes and she wasn't unconscious. They have a videotaped confession. He is pled guilty. The whole story is that he kept giving his sister dabs. For those that don't know, dabs are concentrated doses of cannabis. It's incredibly powerful when you compare it to regular old weed. I tried it one time, found out it was quickly not for me. But back to the story. Well, Bruder said that his sister had repeatedly resisted his sexual advances. So then he kept giving her dabs until she no longer recognized him as her brother. He drugged and raped a minor who was his sister and you're giving him 240 days. I just don't get it. How do you expect people to be safe when even after they commit a crime, they plead guilty to it, you don't really hold them responsible for it. And I hope this judge realizes that if and when Bruder does something horrible again, this is on him. He'll also be at fault there for this bullshit slap on the wrist. And then finally, I want to talk about the horrific bombing in Manchester last night. Now, if you have not heard, around 10.30 late last night in Britain, outside of an Ariana Grande concert, there was a suicide bombing. As of recording this video, 22 people, including children, have died. 59 were injured. Police say they believe the attacker was carrying an improvised explosive. Police have identified the suspected bomber. The Islamic State, aka Goatfuckers International, has claimed responsibility for the attack. But also, police don't know if that's true, if they may be taking credit for something they were not responsible for. This because the statement appeared to get some of the facts of the situation wrong. They claimed that a soldier managed to place a number of devices among a gathering of crusaders in Manchester and detonated them. But officials are saying there was only one explosion and no other devices have been found near the arena. And my heart breaks seeing this story, seeing the footage of the chaos and the fear, this, this barbaric attack, not just on innocent people, but on children. The names and information of those killed are starting to come out. One of them was an eight-year-old girl. And then when I hear that, I, it's just hard for me to feel anything but rage. Now before I get to the point that I really want to hit home on in this story, I need to talk about a guy by the name of David Levin. David's name was all over the place yesterday because in the moments after the attack, he tweeted, multiple confirmed fatalities at Manchester Arena. The last time I listened to Ariana Grande, I almost died too. Following it up with, honestly, for over a year, I thought an Ariana Grande was something you ordered at Starbucks. Then sharing, checked my phone and got this message from Twitter. Try swearing at me now. And then about an hour and a half after his tweet, he wrote, too soon? And as expected, the hate of the internet was directed towards David. I noticed even people that like dark humor going like, this is, this is disgusting. It's not a day after, it's not a week after. You're, you're literally putting this out there in the world and joking about a situation where, where there were people that were still injured, still being taken care of. Some people that were fighting for their lives and then would later die. Many seeing it as essentially someone joking about a murder as it was taking place. David later tweeted, Sorry for offending. Didn't realize the magnitude of the tragedy. I always make stupid jokes about whatever's trending. Condolences to families. Which, David, it doesn't make sense. You said multiple fatalities confirmed. In your first tweet, is that you're thinking that if a terrorist attack only kills a few children, like, it, then it's okay. Then at 19, that's your golden number. He then deleted the offending tweet and tweeted, I've deleted the tweet since so many people asked. And then David, who did not follow what his last name was saying to do, just leave it, leave it alone. He later tweeted out a bunch of gifts, including this one where he wrote, I made a mistake, hashtag, and then I started to laugh. I can't figure out if I think he's more disgusting or stupid. But personally, if I'm offended by anything, it's the, the sad, pathetic attempt at an apology that's not an apology. Didn't realize the magnitude of the tragedy. I always make stupid jokes. Just own your shitty joke and don't lie. Unless, once again, you are more stupid than you are disgusting, in which case, I maybe don't know any better. Whatever, everyone's gonna forget about David in a few days, and I say, the people I want to remember in this story are the victims and those who helped because there were so many. We had women like Paula Robinson. She was reportedly at Victoria Station when the attack took place. She led teenagers to a nearby hotel and shared her mobile number on Facebook so that worried parents could contact her and be reunited with their children. All the people in Manchester who opened up their doors with hashtag room for Manchester, saying if you were stranded in this explosion, if you need a bed, a cup of tea, a charge phone, whatever, come here, you can be safe here in this chaos. The taxi drivers who turned off their meters, put up free taxi and got people the hell out of there. And of course, all the brave men and women who rushed into the scene to help. And not just those who were on duty, it was their time to do their job. Tons of people that were off duty coming in to help. Stories of homeless people that just happened to be around in that situation, working with emergency services people to help people. When something like this happens, you don't know if there are going to be more bombs, there's going to be shooting, you don't know. Those daily heroes that put themselves at risk for others. That's who and what I want to remember in this, because every time one of these senseless acts of violence happens, we have to grasp onto any 
sense of hope. And the only bits of hope I can really grab onto are those who do these amazing selfless acts in the face of horror. In the face of terrorism, people trying to spread fear and violence, they stand up and do good. But most importantly, they stand up. When I see pictures from the Manchester Vigil, seeing so many people coming out less than 24 hours after a terrorist attack, coming out all together, showing solidarity, saying, fuck terrorism, and also, I'm not scared, and you know what, even if I feel a little bit scared, it won't stop us, it won't break us, and that's what gives me hope. And I think that note is where I wanna end that story in today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I'm trying to do with these daily videos, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Join the nation of beautiful bastards who will love your face. Also, if you missed and wanna catch up on yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. If you wanna see yesterday's brand new vlog, click or tap right there. But that said, of course, as always, my name is Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.